the, the big mistake that the paleo folks are making is as follows. The, uh, they make several, but I'm going to triangulate on one really very important logical error. And, and that is that uh, I, I want you to think about a car that, that begins its life as a diesel and that it uses diesel fuel and that if you, if you just put diesel fuel in it, uh, it will go 100,000 miles without any problems. And then it's going to have problems and it's going to die on you, okay? So that, that's how that car works. And we're going to live in a land where you can only go one way on the street. So as you wander through this, this land, land on these windy roads, there aren't very many filling stations, but every time there's a filling station, you fill up the car, okay? Because you never know, you might got, get, get caught short and have to push that car, and it's your primary vehicle of locomotion. Now, I want you to imagine that somewhere along this, this process, the, um, it turns out that you can have a choice where you can put gasoline in the car as well. Now, it's not as good a fuel. It gums up the fuel injectors. There's problems with it. But if you put gasoline in the fuel, if you put nothing but gasoline in there, the thing would go 70,000 miles, not 100. Okay? If you put half gas and half diesel in, it's going to go 85,000 miles. Okay? So the more diesel you can put in, the healthier the car is, but you can use gasoline. Now, I want you to picture this and realize that if you lived in that land, then whenever you came across a station, whether it was a gas station or a diesel station, the right thing to do is to always fill it up. It, even if you just filled up with diesel 10 miles ago and you came across a station and the next station you came on was gas, you'd fill it up with gas. Okay. The reason is you never know that might be the difference between you not making it to the next station or not. That is precisely the situation that our ancestors faced. It was eat whatever was available because that might be the difference between you starving and not starving. Okay? They never knew where their next, next meal was coming from and they needed the widest possible palate that they could get in order to increase their likelihood of survival. One of the things that you will see in humans that is so different from other primates is that other primates simply live in the same habitat and they don't wander. They have very, very small roaming ranges they essentially stake out a territory and they live in it. Human beings are the wanderer. They, and, and you see this today, that human beings have an extraordinary wanderlust, okay? That one of the biggest industries in the world is travel. And travel is the dream of human beings. When, when I retire, when I get enough money, the, that is not classic of animals. That is a bizarre characteristic of our species. And so if you look at our species, you see that we are, in fact, the widest ranging large land animal on Earth, okay? We, we have gone everywhere. We've crossed oceans. We've crossed rivers. We've gone into, you know, very difficult territories. We love the adventure of seeing what's over the next, the next uh, mountain. And that, it turns out, you could only do that if you widen the palate to include everything that you, you could possibly put in there. Human beings have the widest palate of all primates, and so we needed it, so we included meat. We did not eat raw meat for very long. It turns out raw meat is very, very difficult and problematic uh, and is hard on people and will make them sick. So it turns out that we cooked it, okay? So at the end of the day, human beings were eating mostly cooked carbohydrate. They were eating cooked meat if they could get it. The cooked meat was not an ideal food for the optimal health of the species. It was dirty fuel that you would add to it because your biggest threat to survival was starvation. Okay? Much better to die of a degenerative disease at 84 in the wild as a result of including animal food in your diet than to die at 22 of starvation because you weren't willing to eat the meat. Okay? The paleo people do not grasp and understand this argument. I do not see it in their writings. Uh, they, they simply are using a very simplistic uh, uh, superficial pattern match which says clearly our animal ancestors eat meat, therefore we should be eating meat today, which is just utterly ludicrous. Yeah.
Okay, it, it's a it's a horribly illogical argument. Whereas the the vegan folks are saying, look, uh, the vegan folks can get into trouble by saying that that isn't true. You know, you don't want to do that. You want to say you are correct that our ancestors ate meat, but the thing is, is that they were including it as a dirty fuel in order to reduce their likelihood of starvation. Okay, but it is not, in fact, an optimal fuel. And we can demonstrate that empirically by, by putting people on whole natural foods, vegan diets, and they become healthier than any, under any other dietary circumstances. So that, you know, the problem has to be solved in the modern environment by scientific investigation. It cannot be solved by speculation it, it is into our natural history.